Everything on this thing is just fucking murder. Behold, a 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport cylinder head. And this is what has been causing all of my problems with my car, as well as basically stopped it from working. I had previously done a video where I was talking about my car smoking. I did a compression check on it and whatnot. Um, looked at the spark plugs and I had seen there was low compression in one of my cylinders and the car was burning oil like crazy. Eventually it got to the point where it started messing with my fuel system and then the car wouldn't even start anymore. That puts me in a situation where I have no choice but to take the head out. It's not beyond my skill set to take a head out but the way that Nissan had engineered this engine and this car made it nearly impossible to take out. The at-home mechanic, the do-it-yourselfer, this is probably going to be beyond your skill set. You're not going to have the tools you need, you're not going to have the time you need, you're not going to have the, the skills you need. Um, it's, it, it was horrendous. Taking this out took about 12 hours of labor off and on on different days off. And what you see here is partially clean. This used to be filled with sludge. It was just filled with sludge. The way they engineered this car, you have to take about 85 to 90 percent of the engine apart in order to get this off. What ordinarily on any other car might take about an hour and a half or so to get the head out, depending sometimes even less time, but an hour and a half you have to take apart so much of the engine to get this guy out. It's not even funny. I am not happy with Nissan right now. And to be honest, I'm never buying another Nissan as long as I live because of this situation. Right here, we have ourselves a broken valve. This was the reason why we were not getting any really compression in that one cylinder. This is the exhaust. The small one is the exhaust, the large is the intake. During the compression stroke, it's pushing that air and that fuel and that gas up, right? But during the time that it ignites, poof, it comes this way. Well, all of that air, gas, as well as the ignition, the combustion, can come right through this. And when it comes through that, it's going to end up putting pressure on the uh, valve seals. It's gonna, it's gonna ruin them. It's gonna blow them. It's gonna blow them away, right? And that's what happened with this particular valve that went right here. Now, keep in mind, this is the intake right here. Okay, that is the intake. That should not be that dirty. That's because everything was being recirculated. There is nothing about this head or engine that is user friendly. Uh, that's, that's the first thing. There is nothing about it that's user friendly. Valve spring tensioner here that I'm going to end up using um, to remove the spring tension. There are keepers that hold these in place and I'll show you how all of this stuff goes together. But right now what we have to do is we need to compress the spring to release the keepers and after they become loose then I can um, and they're very small by the way they're very small um, so we have to keep track of those and what I'm doing is when those keepers become loose in there I grab a magnet and I pull them out with a magnet and this is a really strong magnet but um, it definitely will pull these guys out and I won't lose them. So there's one and there is the other. Okay. So and I'm keeping these I'm keeping these um, together. So they all go where they originally went. And that's kind of important when you're when you're doing valves and you're going to be redoing, you're going to be reusing the valves and the springs and everything. Um, you want to try to keep it the same. Now, what I had done, man, this thing is just so dirty and gross. Um, what I had done 
is after I took this out, I put water inside the intake portion of the um, head and I also ended up putting it in the exhaust portion of the head and these ports. So I put water in here and water in here, right? This is the exhaust side that is just nasty as can be. Um, but when I put water in this, or you can, you can put oil or mineral spirits or whatever you want, um, since it's aluminum, it's not gonna rust, right? You just pour it out and you're usually okay. As, but I can push this out now with my hand, my finger, but if water does not leak out of this, it means that we have a seal, right? That means that the valves are probably okay. But we have to check something, and that, that is the, I, I'm going to call it throw. But if I push this out, and then I move this back and forth, is there movement, right? It should be very, very, very slight to none. It should be a very, very uh, uh, snug fit in there. It should be able to move freely, but it should not have excessive play. Excessive play will, will end up causing you to have valve problems. And then like on this one where we had the original, there's a little bit more play in this than I like. Okay, I can move that a little bit more than I, I like. So I might end up having to replace that valve guide on that one. Um, but this one is acceptable. This one's acceptable. Very, very little movement. It, it, it is there, but it's very little. So now that I have this off, I want to keep these in order. Okay? Um, they're going to get cleaned up. Everything's going to get cleaned up, and then I'm going to have to put it back together. I'm going to have to do, use lapping compound and stuff on these. This is just so gross. There is just so much junk in here. And when it's time for me to clean this, and I have these valves out, I might end up using Easy Off. To, to clean it, to really get in there and break down that grime. I had called um, other places that do import repairs. And when I told them what was going on, they said, we have to take a pass. We don't have the time, we don't have the space, we don't have all of this stuff to work on that particular car. Because they know that the 2020 Nissan Rogue is a headache. And for the most part, it's better just to replace the entire engine when you have something like this happen. They're really not made to be taken apart and fixed. Okay, So they turned me down on a lot of these things. The dealer I contacted was Mossy Nissan in Poway, California, because they're kind of close to me. They said they were going to get back to me, and they never did. I even called Nissan Corporate and I was talking to their consumer affairs or consumer whatever customer affairs uh, people and I was telling them what was going on and how upset I was at everything and they're like well what do you want us to do I'm like you guys engineered this where it's impossible to take apart you know I mean it's like it's really bad and I'm like and, and nobody is willing to work on the car I can't take it anywhere because nobody wants to work on it because they know how difficult it is. Not only that, there's no aftermarket parts for it. I have to buy everything from Nissan in order to get this thing running. And you guys are overpriced. I'm like, you guys need to take care of this. Well, you have to, you have to take it to the dealership so for them to do a diagnostic. I said, the engine is taken apart. You can't do a diagnostic. It doesn't run. What, do you, what are you talking about? It doesn't run, it's taken apart, you know? So there's no way, there, there is no diagnostic that you need to do, right? I'm telling you what's wrong. Well, you have to do that. And then after you do that, we might be able to work with you and do what's known as Nissan Assist, where they end up uh, paying for part of it. And I had told them, I said, you want me to pay for a tow pay for a diagnostic I don't need just for you to give me an outrageous price and then when I end up telling you 
I need assistance on this or you guys need to take care of this that or the other thing you're gonna say oh well we can't do that and then I'm out of money because I have to have the thing uh, towed back to my house and I said that's what you're asking me to do well we need to we need to diagnose it you can't diagnose a car that's taken apart you know so I got into it with them anyway now after after I end up fixing this thing I am going to be doing videos about Nissan and I'm going to do everything within my power to get them to lose business so other people don't have to go through with what I'm going through right now you know they made it where you have to go to the dealer and that is not right that is not right I'm never buying another Nissan again that is for sure it's so hard to get this thing out that it would be stupid of me to put it back in without checking everything right fix it while it's out so that's that's one um, second is because of the rubber seals that go to um, the valves to make sure oil doesn't get sucked in there like mine was doing um, different types of cleaners can soften those can, can damage them so I, I want as much of this thing apart as I can get it before I start going balls to the wall but putting them back together is just the reverse order it's everything is the same you know I see people struggling with those things trying to get those keepers out and it's just like you know they're magnetic just use a magnet suck them out you know like it's a vacuum work smarter not harder now if this was a normal valve job there's so much that I would be doing that I'm currently not doing um, so much that's actually got a really good seal that one might still be good it felt like there was a vacuum on it it, it felt pretty good um, but there's so much that you end up doing um, you have to take measurements of everything of everything and then you have to make sure that everything is within its specs within tolerance I mean it's just it's never-ending right um, everything has to be perfect but um, what I'm doing here is more of like I'm bringing it back to life instead of making it brand new right if that makes sense so this one's really bad too see when, when I'm seeing like all of this like this carbon buildup and stuff these are the things that I'm kind of interested in like what is going on around here this is happening primarily on this side especially like this buildup this we already know what's going on with that we know what's going on with this right um, same thing here and but this has got some buildup on that too so I'm kind of interested in those okay so I have all of the valves out and I've got all the springs out I've still got my valve seals in place and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to first use engine degreaser and I'm going to let it kind of soak in there and I've got some uh, nylon brushes and I'm going to try to get as much of this stuff up as I can like that um, it's going to make my job a lot easier to take out those valve seals those valve seals man they're already hard as it is to take them out but if they're covered in oil it makes it ten times harder right so I want to try to get as much of this oil off as I can you should have seen it before I cleaned it this is already a lot cleaner than it was it used to look like it was just full of grease I want to clean that as much as I can I want to clean the other side where the valves go in as much as I can after I get my seals out that I'm planning on replacing because um, I'm not going to replace all of them. There's, there's some that are still good. I can tell by when I pulled the valve out, it, it was really sealing. It was locking really well. And so there's no need to, to put new ones in right there. For Even though technically, it would be smart of me to do that. It really would be. Um, in fact, you know something? I should probably order them. I shouldn't do this half-assed. Because they're only about $3 per. Right? So... I really should order some more and do this right. Um, 
In fact, let me do that right now. So I had sprayed engine degreaser on this, scrubbed it, sprayed it out, and I got most of the, um, the grime and grease out of here. Because this is an aluminum head, I don't really have to worry about this rusting. Um, although there are valve guides in here, and those could rust. So after I pull these things out, I'm going to hit it with air, and I'm going to get the, uh, the rest of the moisture out. So our valve guides are inside here, and even though what I do is I grab and I turn, um, boy, these things are just falling apart. Um, I grab and I turn, and then they should, and pulling up and turning, they should pop out like that. And make sure that when you go inside there to grab and turn, you're not grabbing the um, the uh, valve guide. These sit just a touch higher than the valve guide. Um, if you go down too deep, you'll grab that valve guide and you'll never get anything out and you'll you'll scar up the inside of the valve guide. So I started getting rid of some of the carbon buildup on this. Um, this is an intake. Intake should not have that, right? The reason why that's there is because it's getting hot. There's something behind it that's touching it that, that can carbonize, right? So this, this could be from the circulation of the exhaust with the oil going through and hardening. Um, it could be because of the valve seats. So what I'm gonna do is, this I'm gonna clean up. I'm not gonna try to make it look brand new perfect, but I wanna take some of those, those chunks off because it will help a little bit um, in the performance of the vehicle. Right now I don't have any micrometers or anything like that on hand because like I said I don't usually do uh, valve jobs or I don't blueprint engines anymore. Uh, so there's you know there's really no reason for me to have those but um, if I did right now I'd be using them. And then, for those of you that don't know, blueprinting an engine is just um, making it back to specs, kind of, as well as um, sometimes you have to hone things out, you have to enlarge stuff, you have to change a few things, so that way it is basically like a brand new engine. Just think of it as a very detailed and accurate um, engine rebuild. Spend more time cleaning this damn thing. The grime in here was so bad. It's like it's like axle grease. There is pitting and stuff right here, and that this is also one of the um, one of the cylinders that had a lot of carbon buildup. This is the one that was broken. We have pitting here. There's a little bit there. There's a little bit there. A lot right there. So one thing is for sure. All of these need to be. Um, lapped. Taking some of the lapping compound, you don't need a lot, I probably put way too much here. But this is like, this is like sandpaper that is, um, it's like sandpaper that's wet, okay? And what we want to do is we want to put this around the outside edge. And whichever cylinder it goes into, go ahead and, and drop it. Take your suction cup, place it on there. So now we have this. We're gonna push down and we're, we're gonna spin it. And we want to, we, we should hear a little bit of a grind because it's a fine, it's, it's a fine um, sandpaper. in my suction cup here. But when you don't hear anything anymore, it should be good. Now I'm hearing when I move it, but I think it's this rubber hitting the, uh, the outside of that. Okay, so from here I need to push up on this, pop it out, 
wipe it and see if it's even. Okay, let me let me kind of zoom in here so you can see what I'm talking about. Let me zoom in here so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I wanted, I want to see an even, um, an even, um, like sanding or grind, right? So when I when I move this, do you see how that's it's gray right there it's no longer shiny that means it's it's gone all the way around right we have a good seal if I didn't have that same thing with this when I when I kind of clean this what do I see is it shiny or is it gray once again all the way around I can see that it's gray right so when I put this guy back inside here it should have a good seal right and then that that's basically what we want to do with all of these okay um, now the intake wasn't that bad to begin with um, it was the it was the exhaust that's really bad exhaust is really bad you know but that's something that we could probably end up uh, taking care of but that's gray all the way around looks good to me and then when I look at this that's gray all the way around that looks good to me okay so I can do this one at a time um, that way I don't lose track of which which valves have gone in and which ones have not that is where our, our valve seal is gonna be going on this particular one because this is our exhaust and this that's kind of hard to angle this thing so this is the valve that we had just got done lapping and now we have to end up putting a um, seal on there and I ended up getting these I can't believe that there was an aftermarket one they had them at AutoZone of all places, but they only had one set, and it was in National City. I had to drive all the way down there. It was ridiculous. Okay. Now, what they'll do is they'll give you a they'll give you a piece of plastic, and this this plastic usually will go over the valve, right? Before I put the valve in, I should put some oil just basically enough to kind of coat it okay then I'll give it some protection and then make it um, uh, go inside this thing real easy I have a rag underneath this valve right so that way it kind of stays put they'll give you a piece of plastic to go over the top of the um, valve there there's there's a notch that's in the valve that this can get stuck on but what we want to do is we want to take this and then slide it down over the plastic okay there was two of them on there for some reason I'm like sitting there I'm like why does that look weird but um, we'll take this slide it over the plastic and now we have to get that down there and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a socket that is about the same size. Something like that. That has sawdust on it for whatever reason. And I'm gonna gently do love taps. Until it starts sounding like I'm, I've, I've hit, I've hit something solid, okay? Um, I need to make sure that that is seated all the way. So that sounds like it's it's down in there all the way. I can remove the plastic piece now. We should have a good seal on that. And one of the things that I can do to make sure that this has gone down all the way is take like my little pick here, run it down the side, and does it feel like it's going down all the way? Alright, so that one is down, 
and I can tell it's got a nice seal on it because I have moved the valve in and out a little bit okay and we can add a little bit more mortar oil here and then at at the end of all this I'm gonna end up uh, squirting some oil on all these just to make sure that everything is is good to go and then now I've got my spring that I'm placing back where it belongs this goes there of course and then now and then this is this might be something that's a little painstakingly um, annoying but we've got to compress the spring again and we also need to um, put the keepers back in on the on the bottom side I'm looking for the valve where is the valve sitting right which is right there. That's where I place that. And as soon as I have that and it's pretty well lined up is when I start compressing that spring again. Okay. And then, where is my Where's my bar for this? And I'd rather give myself more room than I need. So I've got that down. And then I've got my keepers. And um, sometimes having some small bent needle nose can help considerably. And, and these are tapered, right? So you want to make sure that you um, put them in the right spot. You don't want them upside down. Okay. And there is a groove that is within here. that needs to um, oh of course some people will use a magnetic screwdriver and I totally get that I totally get that You're basically doing, it's almost like surgery. Let me move this a little bit. So I can get this to fall in there. I really should get my glasses, I can't see. When I was a kid, there used to be a game that was called Jaws, and then you had to um, reach into the in, into Jaws' mouth to take out different types of debris that were in its mouth. And um, if you could get it out without the mouth closing, then you would win. You know the game. For some reason, this reminds me of it. Okay, so now that we have that there, what I, I, what I want to do is I kind of want to give it a couple of love taps just to make sure that those seats are, are set. Um, not the seats, but the, the keepers are set. And they are. And then with that, I only have 15 more of these to go. Okay, so same thing, I'm gonna end up Scraping this off, hitting it with a brush. Same thing. A little bit of lapping compound. And right now, you see how that's shiny? We want that to look gray.
what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to slide this in here even though it's not completely encompassed and I'm going to give it a couple of little ups and downs and turns that should end up evenly distributing the compound and because of this carbon buildup right there I don't know if this is going to stick or not I might have to end up uh, changing my plan of attack here Now I don't I don't mind using a wire brush in this area, but I want to kind of avoid using it out here where the head gasket goes. It's like starting a fire, I guess you could say. You'll, you'll, you'll kind of, I really need to clean that. Some people ask, is, if, is it okay to use a drill? You could probably get away with it, but um, it's usually not a good idea because a drill just goes in one direction. It doesn't go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then so you could get um, different types of um, wear. And then sometimes this only takes about 30 seconds to a minute. And other times, you know, you might end up being here for a long while trying to make this right. But if, if you can't keep lapping forever because there you you know the valves and the, the seats have tolerances that you can't go beyond I know that this is um, so little we're gonna be okay but we have this nice gray line all the way across and we have a nice gray line which appears to go all the way across I gosh I really need to get my glasses that feels like that's going to be a very, very tight fit. But you see how nice and um, very little movement just kind of goes down there real nice and easy. But that thing just drops in like it's nothing. I'd be a little concerned. Okay, so now we get to put in, once again, the... Uh, seal but as soon as that feels like that's down there like that that sounded like a nice solid hit that is down what we want to do is with this guy Oh man, that's a good seal that doesn't want to drop. You see that? So we have a nice seal right there. I, oh, I got it. I got it! I paid my dues time after time. I'm committing no crime and bad mistakes. I made a few. There we go. We are the champion, my friends. Okay, once again, a little bit of a love tap. Make sure that everything is set. These two valves that we just got done finishing up, they are connected. They are connected to this port for the intake. So the air is gonna be sucked in through here but the air will not enter the cylinder until those valves open okay when those valves are closed no air can go inside there okay so how do we know if it's sealed and what we can do um, is we can actually pour something inside here ideally you would want to use something that's like mortar oil 
right? Or you would want to use something that's like mineral oil, uh, mineral spirits or, or, or something along those lines. Um, especially because, you know, we're dealing with um, steel and we don't want it to rust. But, but if you can get all the water out, you can pour water in this. You just have to get all the water out right afterwards and make sure that you've already put motor oil on everything before you put the water in. But if any water leaks out of those those valves, then you know you don't have a good seal. Okay? And then so that is what we are going to be doing right here. If I pour liquid inside the intake port, it's going to go right up to the edge of these guys right here. If I see water or anything leak out, now see, I'm, I'm using water because it's thin, okay? Um, I could use acetone if I wanted, and that way also if there's any water that's in there, that could get rid of that too. And you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. Acetone's even thinner than water. This is acetone that I'm going to be pouring in here. We're going to see if we did a good job. This is thinner than water. Now the question is, is do you see anything leaking out of there? I don't. But what do we see here? It's full of acetone. That's very thin. Okay. So we know that these seal well. We did a good job on them, okay? We are the champions. We are the best. right? We are the best. So, we can go to the next two. These two are covered. We know we're good. And I'm gonna pour this acetone out into a container that I can reuse it for the uh, future um, ports. The original valves we're looking like this okay but this one there's there's some of them that are really pitted this is the area that um, the valve had broke so when we get over here I know that the lapping is going to be uh, a little different um, this valve I could probably clean up and I might still be able to use it but during the time that you're taking this apart you're going to see that some of the valve springs have red okay and then some of them are going to end up having like a white okay well the white is for the intake and the red is for the exhaust so now we have the seal test this is the acetone from a couple of days ago you can see that we still have some and how dirty it is let me get rid of that we're going to pour new acetone actually you know some I'm not going to get rid of that and we're going to see if we've got a leak oh look at that immediately leaking we need to do something with that that was the pitted side from what I recall so that's the one I want to focus on and it's like I'm making a fire I'm turning it and pushing down at the same time so this time when I had done it, my battery ran out, but this time when I done it, there was just a really, really, really small amount of acetone that came out of this exhaust uh, valve. And when I say it's a very small amount, it I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say it was a drop, it was like a half a drop, but still, that's not a complete seal. And because it's so close, I think I can make that have a perfect seal. And I've put so much work into this already, there's no reason for me to ignore this small little detail. And as mentioned before, I like using acetone. You know, acetone is really thin. It'll clean stuff out inside there and it, it won't cause any rust and I'm not seeing anything I am not seeing anything 
and it should that that's filled up enough. I'm gonna put a little bit more. Okay, that that sucker is filled. And then, do you see any leakage? I don't. And if there is any, it's so small. Ah, I'm starting to see just a little bit right there. But it's so small. It, that is not going to, that's not a big deal. What's going to end up happening is during the time that this thing's running and then that valve keeps opening and closing, it gets hot, it's, it's going to end up making a better seal. But this is what comes out, right? So it cleans everything. But I want to do that to every time that I end up doing another set of valves. Okay, so we have the valves put back in. And right here, these guys are what are known as followers. So what these guys do is they have a very snug fit, almost like a piston. And then the camshaft rests on these. And so when the camshaft is turning, this is what is pushing down the valve instead of it being a lifter. So after they go in, I'll usually take like a handle of a hammer, push down. The next thing, we have to clean off all of the surfaces, the mating surfaces that are going to be touching other metal. And we have to prepare it for a gasket. I did the same cleaning up here on the sides as well as the bottom. And this is the most important, the mating surface of the actual head itself to the engine block. I'm going to go out and clean off the face um, that's on the engine block right now because this needs to be perfectly flat and perfectly clean. So you'll see we have a pin here. There's going to be one that goes right here. That's inside um, the room that I was working in. We have we might have a remainder of a rubber seal around this. And then so, what I do is I take a razor scraper and very gently go over the mating surfaces. And so, spend the time. You've already got everything taken apart. Don't get lazy now. All of the oil and all of the um, uh, coolant is going to end up getting drained. So, this right here is a degreaser that I had put on there. And you'll notice that I have the pistons halfway down. This is going to ensure that during the time that I put my uh, head on and um, I put the cams in it might end up lowering the uh, valves right and I don't want the pistons up because if I do that and I crank it down I can bend a valve I want to feel around this and see if I feel anything that could potentially be something that can create a bad bond. I'm not going to get too crazy with this, but I've got some steel wool here I'm going to be using to kind of help me get off some of these smaller little pieces as the brush wasn't really doing exactly what I wanted it to. And then here We've got our gasket that we're going to set into place. I have this other piece inside I need to bring out. And then these just help align the head when you place it on there. Being careful not to uh, bend the uh, head gasket. So that is in place. So we've got our head here, and I want to wipe off the bottom surface of it again. Now your exhaust manifold gasket, when you look at it, you're going to see one side is kind of, I'm going to call it like a cutting edge, and the other side is rounded. Okay? The rounded side is the side that goes to the exhaust manifold. Okay? So basically, it's like this. 
if I can get this on here. That is how this guy sets. Okay. But I want to make sure that all of this lines up and this thing isn't setting funny. I want to grab it and kind of wiggle it a little bit. Is it set in its, um, in its corresponding um, holes? Everything looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the engine up just a little bit, but it looks like we're good. Okay. It's just that you only get one shot at this. Double check everything. We're going to be putting our head bolts back in. And I'm making sure that they're very clean. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to be the first one to tell you. It's usually a good idea to replace these and not to reuse them. Okay? But I have reused them many, many, many times in uh, cars from the past. And I've never had any problems. Okay, but it's usually a good idea to replace these. I am not going to. I'm going to hit each one of them with just a little WD-40. There's a, 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 a grease that you can get that is for uh, head bolts. I'm just putting a little WD-40 to ease the application. Um, not overly worried about a lot of the stuff that other people worry about and I know that it's, it's an insurance policy I get it you know. but these go in hand tight at first okay with using the reusing the bolts over again there is the possibility that they might break um, and I'm aware of that but like I've mentioned before I have reused a lot of different um, head bolts in, in the past and, and honestly I've never had a problem. Of course now that I say that I'm probably jinxing myself. Okay so the type of socket that is used is what's known as a Torx right here. Okay, And we are going to be doing these all hand tight right now. We're not going to be trying to Superman it or anything, but because we are doing this hand tight The order in which we do it is not as important as when we actually start torquing it down, okay? Because this is just snug to hand Okay. When we get ready to start torquing these things down, we need to do it in a certain order And we're going to end up doing it twice And I'll let you know what the uh, um, torque specifications are when we get to that. And then also by doing this by hand right here, it'll tell me if it feels like the threads are dirty. Okay. So I'm going to start back here. And I am going to be... Um, Kind of just getting this down to a, uh, maybe like a decent torque, but I'm not going full on yet. see that I'm starting in the center and working my way out. This is not to torque specs or anything like that. This is just where it's, it's tight. If I had to guess what I was putting on right now for the torque um, probably around 20 pounds maybe I, I don't know it's not a it's not a whole lot I mean 
this right here is 20 pounds of torque, okay? Hear that? Oh, that's why I was like, I'm pretty sure it's right around 20 what I did. It's 20. It'll click to let you know. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to get the actual torque measurements. Forgot what they were. Give it a whirl. What I've done is um, I've gone to 40. It says after you get there, do another 60 degrees. What I had done is I had gone through with the 37, click, click, moved it up to 40, click, click. I did it one more time at 40, click, click. We can start getting ready to put the cams in. This is once again degreaser. And this I'm putting on here. So my gasket has my RTV gasket is going to have a nice tight seal and bond okay there's only a few spots really actually on this that you need to um, clean up this is the original uh, camshaft that I've got here and if you look at it it'll say E1 that's the exhaust the exhaust is a smaller followers larger followers are intake. Another way you can look at it is the intake is on this side, the exhaust is on that side. You will also see that the variator has a line. And that variator, there's a line up here, there's a line up here, you have a line here. I want this big line to be facing the top if possible. if possible but I can always turn that later right now I can probably get this in here where nothing is really pushing down on the uh, valves per se these two lobes right here are hitting those followers kind of keeping it up a touch and that's fine once again I'm trying to find a happy spot here for this and that might end up being as happy as I can get that now there's two trains of thought when it comes to RTV usage the first is you place it on there while it is still wet you end up um, uh, having both pieces touch each other. I'm going to move this so I have better access. And then tighten everything down. Whatever herniates out is something that it didn't need. Um, so that's that's one train of thought. The other train of thought is you put the RTV down and um, you let it set up for a little bit before you attach anything to it. That way it has time to kind of solidify a little bit.
And ideally, we don't really want any to go inside the um, inside the head, right? But at the same time, it's going to herniate. There's there, there's very little you can do about that. It's better to have good coverage. about everything else later and then where we have these screw holes um, that's going to be okay so now if you think this is where you're done you'd make a mistake because we have to we have to place some all the way around where the spark plugs go Since we're not going to be using this immediately, it is going to give it time to, to set up and cure. Because we have to get these guys over here to line up. Interestingly enough, it kind of looks like they they are. But if they if they don't, we can we can damage things. So it's important that they fit in their slots. And it looks like I've got that. These are the bolts that came out of it. And then with these, there is also another set of torque specifications that we have to adhere to, as well as a tightening sequence. Right now I'm just hand tightening again, just trying to get them into their respective holes. But once again, this, I'm not torquing it down. I'm just systematically bringing these things down. If I feel heavy resistance, it tells me, hey, back off because you might be damaging something. All right, so. You could technically put these in with a with a drill at first as long as the drill doesn't have high torque. It's usually center and out because we are dealing with a thin aluminum right here. Now I'm purposely using a uh, quarter inch socket um, to do the torquing and I'm not using a torque wrench. That's because I know I can control the smaller one better and there's less likelihood of me damaging anything. Putting some oil Same with this guy, it has oil on it. There we go. That rides up and down when the camshaft turns. I'm not going to try to spin all day making it look beautiful, but I want this to be better than it is. It's pretty nasty right now. I don't know if the camera can see that or not. Yeah, if you think it's hard to see with the camera, imagine how I feel. I'm just going to try to get this to be seated and then we will put a, uh, a wrench um, on the cam, on the camshaft, to hold this from moving during the time that I'm tightening this on. And this also ends up getting torqued and this gets a lot of torque. It wasn't easy for me to take it off, that's for sure. People will usually end up using a uh, crescent wrench. Yeah. 
and without it being um, attached to its um, uh, engine mounts, it's a little crazy. I want to make sure that everything spins freely. It feels pretty good. That's those valves snapping back. And then right there. You see that that large notch is up on top. Right here. I'm, I'm, I'm just turning these to make sure that everything is kosher. Okay, so right there. Right there. That's about right. But you'll see on the timing chain, we have a yellow, and as we cruise around, we keep cruising, now we have a dark one that's been blued. We have another one that's been blued, okay? By taking this and throwing it down here, the blue is what I want to be over the um, notch. I keep getting one over. And that, that is really important. So that is correct. That is correct. So while I'm waiting for my timing chain guides to show up uh, in the mail, which were special order, um, I'm gonna start putting the rest of the car back together. Gives me some time so that way I'm not feeling like I have to rush through anything. So these are the gaskets that were originally in there and usually it's not good practice to reuse gaskets um, but in this case they're not brittle they don't look like they've been overly compressed um, so I'm gonna end up I'm gonna end up reusing them and I've got my RTV right here and I'm going to end up putting um, a bead of RTV inside here what this will do is it will give it a little bit more um, width to make up for any type of compression that was there before just to ensure a good seal but I do want to make sure that I've got some RTV inside there during the time that we're tightening this it's going to end up herniating some of that out of there which will create a much better seal and then the only thing that we've really um, got to concern ourselves with is the face what it's touching one of the things that I do when I start putting this type of stuff back together is I'm like okay well how many hoses am I going to be hooking up this has got one two three right these are going to be somewhat self-evident and we've got one sensor all right so I just have to remember four and that way when I'm down over there and I'm, and I'm looking at stuff and I'm like hey what does this go to what does this go to and if I see any stray if I see any stray um, hoses or connections or anything in that area I, I pull them out now so that way I don't have to deal with it um, later on down the line. As soon as I have one, the other should be pretty straightforward. At first we're gonna just go taut, all right? We, we don't want this to be um, too tight in any one area. We this is plastic, and, and we want this to be kind of evenly uh, sitting on the uh, on the head. So this bottom one is going to be the first one that I'm going to end up cranking down because it's the hardest to get to. When I feel resistance like when I know it's not going to really go too much further which is about like right 
right there. I might get another half of a, maybe a quarter of a half um, on there. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing the RTV herniate. That's a good thing, but keep in mind, at first it's not going to want to compress. So it's, it, it's going to stop. And then after it, it stops, it's, it's going to slowly start herniating that stuff out. But when it does, you're losing uh, torque. You're losing tension on those bolts. So you need to go back and uh, retighten them. So one of the good things about um, a lot of these sensors is their um, connectors are um, a lot of times they'll only fit on a particular product so you don't have to worry about mixing and matching this one right there okay so and then that is the water temperature okay now we've got another one that's right here which tells me this probably gets hooked up like that somewhere okay we can we can see that this more than likely is going to set like that this is going to set like that um, we're going to end up having a hose back here that goes to the um, oh, it's right there that goes to the heater core right here and then the heater core is right here that hose goes to that okay then this is fuel if i put this on this side are these hoses going to get in the way where i can't tighten it if I put it on this side, will I have better access? And the answer is yes. But you'll see that I have placed the clamp on this side, so it's easier for me to get to. And I'm also going to be putting it at a slight angle here to uh, make it easier for me to tighten. So that is on there pretty, pretty good. It's probably good enough as it is, but I wanna make sure that I've got a little bit of extra uh, torque on there. There's not a whole lot of pressure that's inside there. I mean, there is some, but it's it's not a lot. If it was like a fuel line or something like that, man, I'd probably put two clamps and make sure that they were torqued down real well. <coughs> you don't want to be driving and have one of those fly off and your car dies and you're like, you smell gas all over the place and you don't know where it's coming from. Sometimes you have these videos on YouTube where somebody you know, it looks like they're trying to teach you how to take things apart. They're more than likely actually filming that for themselves because they'll end up taking a bolt out and then they'll go like this to show it to you. That way, the person, I mean, the person that's taking it apart, they'll know where it goes, you know. Um, I don't usually do that, um, but sometimes I do depending on the, what the task is. This goes to my camshaft. This is a position sensor. Helps keeps every help, helps keep everything in time. Just giving that a clean up. Looking at the the O-ring. Is it is it okay? Yeah, it looks okay. You know, don't don't fight don't fight O-rings and things like that. Um, let WD-40 do the work for you. You know, if you if it's a, if it's a little big and you just keep pushing, 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 you know, you can mess up the, the O-ring. It's better to use a little bit of lube. may ask the question, Will, what is what is that? This is a um, mechanical fuel pump. It has an O-ring, but I'd feel better with a little RTV on the outside of this. Depending on where the camshaft is sitting, you might not be able to get that all the way down. But there's a spring, so it, it, it'll push against the cam here. And I'm, I'm pushing down on this at the same time as turning it to work that O-ring in there. I'm doing everything by hand. Um, 
at first because I want this to go in kind of straight because of that o-ring. This is only going to be hand tight because I still have to put that fuel rail on. Here's our fuel rail and, and these kind of injectors actually set inside the um, the uh, combustion chamber. What I want to do is, um, I'm going to have to get my glasses, but I want to look at the face of these and see if anything like this one is really bad. This one's really bad. Covering all that carbon and um, oil so this was exposed to a lot of exhaust and burnt oil and things like that I might have to use a uh, might have to do a fuel injector uh, cleaning on these guys might have to replace that but I'm pretty sure that this is going to be expensive there's a way that I could test this and to be honest I'm not really in the mood to do it, okay? Um, I think in one of my videos where I'm working on a BMW, um, you can see how I did that. Because I'm pretty sure I had done a video on how to test fuel injectors. Um, pretty sure I did. Now, what I'm going to do is in this end, I'm going to put a bunch of brake clean and then pour it out. So this one I have to take off, but it would be easier for me to take off after it's inside the car because if not, I'm going to have to like wrestle with this. So, oh, that fucking hurt my thumb. I have a new one of these coming in the mail. It's a fuel pressure sensor. I'm glad there's no O-rings on this. O-rings are the biggest pains in the ass <laughs> when it comes to um, fuel injectors. I was able to hook up the fuel line from the uh, fuel pump. The fuel pressure sensor was something that it was throwing uh, codes before this ended up uh, dying on me. So <clears throat> either way it needed to be replaced. So during the time I was taking this out, I didn't care if I broke it. Because it was bad already. There are going to be a couple of things that I'm going to modify before I put this back together. And um, one of them is the alternator, the, uh, the frame for it. Because it's, it's entirely too tight where it sits. And, and it's made it quite problematic to get it out. And I don't want to have to fight it to get it back in, so I'm going to take a file to it to take just a little bit of that edge off. Anytime that you end up having to take apart something that's like this, and 
it's very very difficult right you you want to give up and it takes hours and hours and hours and hours when you start putting it back together the process of taking it apart and wanting to give up and everything like that can actually be somewhat traumatizing and then so when it's time for you to put it back together you, you might lose confidence did I put that in the right spot Did I put it down to the right torque did I put the gasket you know did I put enough gasket material did I do this did I do that and then you might start sweating it and and thinking like oh man I messed something up I know I messed something up I forgot this I forgot that trust yourself trust yourself and 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 go slow and just double check everything right before before you continue the next part even though I have I've I've done all this and I know the way it's supposed to be I'm still thinking I messed up I'm 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 thinking I did something that's going to ruin it where I've taken it apart again and that's just because the tear apart was traumatizing okay but I know that what I'm doing is right okay and then I'm going by past experience I'm going by what I know I'm going by the understanding on how certain things work and so even even though like in this case um, it didn't call for a gasket I put some there anyway right just because I want to make sure you know I'm, I'm dotting all my I's and crossing all my T's and even though this camshaft comes out of the exact same engine you know I'm a little you know worried about that too even though I know it's the same you know there's all sorts of stuff that's going on uh, through my in my mind and even though it seems like I'm confident which I am right even though um, I'm confident like that um, you know I'm, I'm still I still kind of question some things you know I still question some stuff so right here I'm looking at all of the um, the fuel injector hookups and we're gonna start putting these on one by one this is my coil pack coil pack coil pack coil pack ground and ground right there these guys are going to end up going to my um, sensors that are over here right and then I've got alternator and I should have another alternator yeah alternator and I've got that guy right there. There's a um, there's a couple of sensors, from what I recall, that's on the intake manifold. This fell in sawdust, but it, and it was still oil. I knew I had to clean it anyway. I need to take engine degreaser to this, clean it out real well. Um, just get all that nice and neat. And I have to do the same thing with the. Um, I have to do that with the valve cover and the intake manifold. The intake manifold has had exhaust and all sorts of other stuff and oil, vapor, fumes, and smoke just uh, circulating through it. And I want to clean all of that stuff out of there. Um, but as of this point, we're pretty good. As of this point, we're pretty good. And I'm going to hold off with the exhaust manifold just because I know I'm going to be raising and lowering this guy a few more times. I'm just looking at everything and making sure that all my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed. Which it looks like they are. So I ended up just using a um, little brush and um, some brake clean and some degreaser. Some regular, you know, purple degreaser. And uh, clean this up. I was mostly focusing on where my gasket is going to be sitting, right? As well, and this is something that many people might miss, these ports right here, well that it gets hooked up to that, but these ports, these two get hooked up to the PCB valve right here. We don't want those clogged. That could create a problem. Right, so I sprayed brake clean inside there. You could use a carburetor cleaner. It's just I got brake clean really cheap, so that's why I'm using it. But we ended, um, 
spray inside there make sure it's clean spray inside here and that ends up coming out where is that right over here okay out of that port by taking this placing it inside placing it right over the, the opening and I should be able to see some come out of the PCV valve yep it's coming out of the PCV valve okay so going to help clean the PCV valve. This is a new one, by the way. Um, but also, it's going to make sure that there's nothing in there that can prevent the, the circulation of air. And I've done the, I've done the same to this side. Um, I cleaned out the inside of the um, cap here for the oil because this thing was always locking up on me and there was a lot of grime inside there so cleaning that up will end up helping me out a little bit later on down the line um, but this is clean enough now for me to put my um, intake manifold gasket so this goes in just like if you're replacing a screen door screen right you push it inside the cavity pretty much like that and it will have certain bins already preformed in it and that's how you'll know you're putting it on correctly in the right direction i don't think it's really necessary for me to put rtv because it's a new gasket but to be honest wouldn't hurt either so this is ready to roll all of this stuff is going to evaporate by the time that i'm ready to put this on but at least it's ready. Around the inside, I took a chisel and I just gently kind of scored it to try to remove the bulk of the previous RTV that was on here. And right now I'm using a um, stainless steel brush to uh, brush off remaining RTV. But with a little work, it will come off. But what I'm doing here is the exact same thing I'm going to need to do on the piece that sits up here. But, oh, we've got a little bit of stuff right here, right here. So, see, I can see this a little bit better now. So, we'll do this again. Technically, you could use a wire wheel as long as it's not too aggressive um, to clean up this, this mess. I feel like that's not bad. I really want to know what happened right here. This, God, this, it looks really bad. I don't know what happened right there, but it's like there's a chunk taken out. So when I get my copper RTV, which as I had mentioned before, I had ordered it. Um, and the reason why I ordered it instead of just going down and buying it, I'm still waiting for other parts. So um, I get it on Amazon a little cheaper. So I, I decided just to do that. And then by the time that it gets here, my other parts will probably be here because this is one of the last things that goes back on. And so right here there's an O-ring and it sets um, on the engine block and you'll see that when we, when we install it. Right here and right here are two little O-rings and those set in the head and you'll see that when it's time for us to install it. Having this fine finish tells you that there needs to be some type of gasket there right anywhere you see like a fine finish there's supposed to be a gasket or something there so when we see this and this we know hey um, there's got to be something here to seal working on this Nissan Rogue has been god-awful it really has now that I've worked on it 
it's not so it's not as bad as it was but still the way they engineered this is so asinine it is so asinine it's one of those things where it's just kind of like these are not meant to be fixed they're meant to be thrown away and replaced the engines and it kind of looks like that not only that but the parts are incredibly hard to find even if you end up um, ordering from a Nissan dealership or Nissan directly it'll say this is a special order part you're gonna have to wait you know and then this car isn't really that old it's only four years old so it, it just tells me if I'm having this amount of problem with this thing right now you know how's it gonna be in the future the alternator is very 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 tight fit um, too tight so what I'm doing on one side there is a uh, piece of steel I'm not going to touch that this side is aluminum and what I'm going to do which I started as you can see is I'm going to um, take this down a touch and I'm going to do this on both sides I'm going to do a few test fits um, and I'm not taking off a lot um, I just want this to where I'm not having to wrestle it to get it back inside there because there's not a lot of room it's already difficult enough as it is I, I, I don't need added problems right so um, I'm gonna see if that is enough and I'm gonna do the same to this side right here I usually wear gloves but in this case I'm not going to this is gonna be maybe a 10 second weld. So I threw this in cold water. It'll help harden it just a little bit, not, not too much. But here is the socket that I use for the spark plugs and it is just a hair under that lip so I can get this inside there um, to tighten when we when we uh, when I end up getting my uh, is that hot? no when I end up getting my uh, chain guides that'll work that'll work so needless to say, I'm pretty upset right now because I looked in the owner's manual and uh, the owner's manual basically is saying, oh, if you want, um, if you want uh, your radiator flushed, if you want new coolant, if you want these things, you have to take it to the dealer. It doesn't give you anything. There's nothing there at all where you can do it yourself. And I keep finding that with this fucking car, this is it, everything is like that you cannot you cannot do anything you can't do anything on this fucking thing and they want you to take it to the dealership this is the last time I'm buying a Nissan it's disgusting is there a way for me to fill this up without going to the the dealership yeah yeah it's just really inconvenient they don't give you a lot of room to take this in and out so we have a mark that's right here that kind of protrudes and what I want to do is I'm going to cut this and what I've done is I've taken a diamond file and marked both sides of this so after I cut it I can regroove it but I need every every fraction of an inch that I can get to get this back in there might not look like a lot but trust me that is going to come in handy <laughs> having having that and what I'm doing is I'm just um, filing in the same marking line that way I don't lose it so let me go see if this is going to fit in there easier and that made a world of difference boy did it boy did it this project has been going on for more than a month and main reason 
availability of parts. That's the main reason, availability of parts. The second reason, um, day off. I, I don't have the days off that I need to get this done. If I had all the parts, I would have just taken days off whether they liked it or not because I can't get to work if I don't have a car, right? And they would understand that. There's a few things that I want to go over that I have not gone over in my earlier videos. And are they things that are important? Yes, but are they important to what I'm doing? Uh, well, it depends, but I'm going to say not overly important at this time. What I'm going to be talking about is some stuff that has to do with the valve work that I did and the, the head. Okay. Now, if you were to have looked at the... So during the time that you were looking at the, the head and the, the, the valve work that I was doing, I had put in what are known as followers. Okay, and I had shown you those, and they were like the cups. I'm, maybe I'll go grab one because I have some extra ones, um, just so you know what I'm talking about. So these have overhead cams, and they don't have the typical lifter. They have what's known as a follower. And then this is the follower, okay, that um, I was talking about earlier that I had installed. So these set inside that cylinder at a very tight spec and they move up and down with the spring, okay? But there is a thickness be to, be, there is a thickness of these followers, right? And when you when you are checking on this particular car for um, valve clearance, right? Between the camshaft lobe and this, you know, you put your feeler gauge. These can wear and it creates more of a gap, okay? Is it going to have a huge impact on the performance of your car? I wouldn't say it's going to be huge or anything like that, but it can have an impact. And so you'd get a micrometer and you would you would measure the thickness of this because they need to remain a certain thickness um, in order to have the proper valve clearance. Okay, but this is this is kind of like the replacement of the lifter, if that makes sense. Okay, this is kind of like the replacement of a lifter. Now I wasn't having any problems with any of those, so I didn't I didn't even bother doing any measurements or anything like that. Um, but if these do wear and you can and you, you know you see a wear on them and stuff like that, it's probably a good idea to replace them. Um, but yeah, you would end up measuring these with a micrometer, getting measurement, seeing if it's within tolerance, and if not, you'd replace the follower. You know, and there's 16 of these guys. There's eight for the um, exhaust and eight for the intake. This is exhaust. This is one of the smaller ones. Okay, and you want to make sure that that hole right there is um, not clogged up or anything. But m for the most part, these are all good. I didn't bother checking that. So what can happen is carbon can deposit back here. It can deposit up here and it gets in the way of airflow, right? Whether it's exhaust or whether it's intake, it gets in the way. So these should be cleaned up, right? To maximize all of that stuff, uh, to prevent drag, right? Because what will happen, the air will come in here and if it's uh, got a bunch of gunk on there, it can kind of get in the way, it creates a little bit of resistance, right? But that should be all clean, but you need to also measure the thickness of the valve to make sure that the valve is within tolerance, it's within specs, okay? You wanna make sure that it's not bent, okay? All of the things that I'm talking about, for me, um, I'm not doing an engine rebuild, right? It, it kinda looks like that, but it, I'm not doing that, right? And then I knew 
by the way that these felt when they went in that the tolerances were probably good enough right they're not ideal right but they're pretty close right there was there was a couple that I'm like ah, you know it's it's walking that fine edge but part of me is just like whatever I, I'm, I'm good with it I, I'm fine with it now let's talk about the timing chain you'll see that that is black it's been blued and we have this groove right here and I even though I call this a variator it's it's um a variable uh, valve timing it's a VVT along with this right as part of the VVT um, and you'll see that we have another groove right there and there's another chain link that is darkened right there it's been blued those two need to line up okay let's go down here now when we look at this now when we look at this you'll see that this one is yellow right there and then you'll see that there's a dot right and then that is where that one goes as long as you have those um, in those locations you're good okay when we start putting on the timing chain guides it might move a little bit okay because right now the camshafts are in a kind of a weird position and then they're going to want to spring back into to place we're going to put this side first and then we're going to put this side okay but by the time everything's said and done it'll be nice and taut um, let me remove this one i only put this here temporarily these right these right here use oil pressure to push right the the chain to guide it we have one that is over here we have one that is over here and I had taken it apart and I cleaned it out and I had reset it to where it's like it's new this I want to make sure is really clean um, before I put put that back on and I'm gonna end up putting that back on after I put my chain guide okay it'll all make sense here in a little bit and you can see that I've kind of sprayed around this to clean it up a little bit I've got some more stuff I have to remove right so when I put my um, timing chain cover on everything is golden okay so that will help with that now this pan is going to be full of sludge full of it so I'm going to remove it um, right now I've got a piece of wood that is holding that up and then I'm going to put the jack here temporarily just to get that up enough that I can remove it and I'll lower it back down um, afterwards so I can clean all of this stuff out and uh, that way when my oil shows up tomorrow I can go ahead and put my first thing of oil in and um, get that ready um, wow what a pain in the butt this is so here's our oil pan and it's got sludge but not as much as i was expecting um still needs to be cleaned up and then we've got our makeshift gasket that's partially on here i need to remove put a new one on um, underneath is really sludgy um, let me move some of this stuff out of the way um, Yeah, underneath is it's pretty sludgy pretty sludgy but um, I'm gonna see what I can do as far as cleaning some of that up and uh, put it back together so that way I have my 24 hours um, of uh, gasket uh, curing we need to make sure that it's free from any type of oil or contaminants here. This right here is also going to end up um, uh, removing water. It's going to displace water. During the time that I was prying this off,
during the time that I was prying this off, this got marred up a little bit. I made sure that it was flat, right? Hammer pounding it back flat, as well as kind of making sure that this was a little smooth so that way it wouldn't create a potential leak. I'm not going to be using gold RTV, I'm going to be using my, my, uh, I'm going to be using my ultimate black, right? And I want to put a nice thick bead. You'll see that I've placed a piece of wood here to hold the engine up at a fairly level uh, place. And um, I did that during the time that I was putting on uh, well, removing and putting on the um, oil pan. Okay, so we got our parts finally. And these had to come all the way from Japan, which is irritating. But these are our guide chains. We have a couple of little bolts like this that are going to go on the side. We're going to put them over on this side. But before we, we do that, we have to make sure that all of our um, timing chain locations are correct. We should have a dot right here on this gear and then this is where the yellow would go, right? Your timing chain might have different colors but sometimes it, there's pinks and all sorts of stuff but when I look at this do I see my dot? And I'm going to get my uh, flashlight because I need to make sure that that is correct. The ones on the top need to be in the, the right spot. Do you see that mark right there? That, that dot? And then right underneath it, there is another one. Now, for the most part, these two are in the exact same spot. So this right here is what we're going by, that dot. This one back here goes to this, this one right here, okay? This one is going to go up in here. And this, this particular one is going to be easy to put in. Hopefully the top will be just as easy, but I'll have to come from a different angle. And these guys, I already tightened the top. These guys need to be on here uh, really tight, okay? Um, there are torque specs for this, but generally speaking, <clears throat> giving pretty much, you know, maximum power um, with something this size is more than enough and it won't over tighten it right because you don't want to over tighten either this is aluminum and it can be stripped if you're Superman so what I'm doing is I'm using the the quarter inch because I have better access but at the same time yeah I can't move that anymore that is cranked that is cranked you'll see that this is the bolt that earlier I ended up having to weld that 14 inch, I mean the, the 14 uh, millimeter socket onto it so that way I can um, attach this damn thing, right? And that's gonna happen from the top. All right, uh, this is giving me a lot of grief. So right here is a bolt that we got again in and what I had done is I had placed this kind of on the outside to get it started and after I started it I pushed it in place where it needed to be because if not just too difficult so I'm gonna end up tightening that down quite well same thing I want to make sure that that does not come loose and uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll finish up the bottom while tightening it took the slack out right so we got all this slack right here and it shifted during that time and what we need to do is try to uh, get this to somewhat loosen up again 
so I can turn I can turn it backwards um, the the crankshaft and then if I'm lucky I can do it without having to remove that difficult side over there okay so that madness is fixed we got that right there there's slack on this side this side right here gets pushed against that chain and I had cleaned I had cleaned the hydraulic tensioner here pushed it back in held on to that spring right there so as soon as I put this back in I can release the uh, the spring and it'll push against that so let me lower this and once again we want to make sure that all of the mating surfaces are clean that nothing is going to prevent this from uh, having a good a good clean tight bond um, we do not put RTV in this area okay so we put it everywhere else but we don't put it here it's not necessary as long as both of those those surfaces have a really clean mating it, 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 they'll be fine right? but oil pumps through the rear and forces that forces that in there is this the wrong size oh I got the wrong size I'm, I'm torquing these down in, in increments right so I get it hand tight plus a little bit more and then I'll crank it down just a little bit on both sides but same thing I do not want to over tighten this I'm dealing with aluminum right so this right here the spring all I got to do is squeeze it and then that shoots forward okay and I was able to rebuild this um, quite easily actually is and I know that this is kind of in an awkward spot, but so am I. And what I'm doing is more important than you watching. So I'm gonna tend to myself first. So what we're gonna do is we had put that back on and we need to turn this a few times to see if it is going to bind up if the if the pistons are going to hit the valves one that RTV will hold, help hold it in place during the time that I'm doing this because um, I'm gonna end up being kind of blinded to what's going on behind here in a minute and any extra insurance that I can put in place is good insurance okay, so there's a second and then we have a third which goes down lower okay so I'm gonna go ahead and lower the engine so I can put some RTV on here and I need to get that uh, cap off I need to get that bolt off and I'm gonna do it um, by hammering right so if I try to put this on and turn this backwards what's gonna happen it oh it came loose how do you like that? Usually it turns backwards. Um, all right, well, looks like I'm not gonna have to do that after all. But if, if that does happen, you can tap your, your socket wrench with a hammer and then it'll break it free a lot of times and it won't turn because it's a sudden impact, right? So anyway, oh, that's like lovely. What we need to do is get what we can down here RTV'd and right now I'm charging the battery because it's just been sitting there for quite a while um, I might have to lower this but uh, we'll see I've increased the size of the uh, 
the RTV uh, output right here. And then, I don't know if you can see that or not, but right there is an O-ring, right there. And that O-ring, I put a little RTV behind it because I don't want that to fall out during the time that I am uh, trying to get this valve cover back. Not valve cover, I keep calling it valve cover. I don't want it to fall out during the time that I'm putting this timing chain cover back on. You can't see it, but right here is where a bolt goes. And then I have to RTV that around this because that is hard to get to. I might be able to do it if I move the camera. The sun is in a really awkward spot, but I don't know if you can see it, but right there and right there are two O-rings. And I put a little RTV behind it so they stay in place. I've got RTV all the way around it, so let's see if we can get this thing back in, which is quite a task. It helps if you have the alternator uh, removed. anticipating all right <clears throat> what I've done is I've started in the middle sides and I've kind of worked my way around with the rogue this is the rogue sport with the rogue they kind of do that and then they wrap around the top first and they do this last um, I've got some concerns about some of the things that I've seen so I'm doing I'm doing it center, I'm working this way around, and then I'm going to work the top, and um, it's for my own personal reasons, but I'm going to end up doing that because um, I had seen some things I didn't really care for. And I'm also um, going through and making sure that I see RTV herniating out of different areas. All right. There's only one bolt on this whole engine that looks like this, and it goes right here. Behind this and this are where those two O-rings are to create that seal. Alright, so this is something that um, I couldn't really find anywhere, so I ended up having to think about it. To come up with the correct answer and we have filters here for the solenoids for the the VVT and they look like this one side is open one side is closed so the question is is which side goes in first okay so if the closed side went in first even though that there is an opening here all of the debris would start forming around the outside of this and there's not a lot of room and then so it would get clogged pretty quick if I turn it this way well there's more room inside here for it to get clogged and so it'd be more efficient and that told me this is how these guys go inside is like that okay so the um, solid side is closer to us and I've got our TV on it already but it goes on just like that during the time that I've been working on this I lost my my favorite ratchet and I, I keep losing that particular ratchet all right so because of things outside of my control, the camera was not on for certain things, but I've reattached the exhaust manifold, and then I've also placed the valve cover 
um, back on. And right now I'm going through double checking that I have everything hooked up. I do have something missing from my um, alternator and I need to find that wire. And this intake manifold gasket looks like it's going to be okay. So I'm going to put these in place but I'm not going to crank them down. Um, everything right now is just hand tight. During the time that I have been working on this, you'll see that I haven't really been talking too much about torque specs or tightening sequence or anything like that. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, it's because I can't find anything. There are no repair manuals for this. Um, there's there's nothing I can't find anything on this on this vehicle and, and it's been driving me crazy because I'm like I need to know what this this measurement is I need to know what this is and there's nothing there now there's plenty for the Nissan Rogue but not the Rogue Sport everything that I have been doing on this car I have had to go by experience for the most part because there, there's just no information on it out there. And it's just, I, I, I hate Nissan so much because of the, what they did with this. As a rule of thumb, usually center out is best, but sometimes, depending on how this is configured, you, you kind of zigzag, but I'm gonna start with the center. But there's gonna be two separate tightening sequences on this. So the first, I'm going to get it to where it is almost almost snug right there and I'm not going to go beyond that and then I'm going to come to the outside and then do this one now the exact same order I'm going to end up cruising back over here So we have two other bolts, one back here and one underneath the throttle body. So I've got all my other hoses hooked up, the ones that were loose, I hooked everything up back here, I put all the clamps back on, whatnot, but now we got to do our throttle body and um, this gasket seems fine. So we will um, go ahead and put that on. And we want this to be free of grime and everything else. So here, here is um, a little something. Do not try to open this valve at all. Um, be very careful on how you clean it. Um, for me, all I did was just spray some brake clean back here and let it soak and then poured it out. That's it, I didn't want to do anything else. So after I get this car running, I have to replace the windshield because it's it's broken. Some big old cracks in it. I'm running up. Okay. See, but if I keep a small, if I'm using a small socket, it reduces the chance of me over torquing. So the MAF sensor is back there and we have our rubber boot. We need to hook all of that stuff up. We can't really start the car yet. It'll be vacuum leaks all up plenty, but okay. So we have a couple of clips on this side and this side and uh, we can remove our air filter, which this one has seen better days and I got a new one already. But what we want to do is we want to Take this and uh, move it to where it needs to be. And it's really important that this boot is tight and it doesn't have any cracks in it or anything like that. 
because our MAF sensor is measuring the air that's going in. If, if there's a vacuum leak and air can get in through here, it's going to throw lean codes. And uh, you're going to be in a world of hurts because most of the time when you end up running, running lean code, that rubber boot has cracked, it's deteriorated, and it's sucking in air. I still have the uh, inside panel, the tire well, and I still have um, tire. I have to find that. It's almost a moment of truth where I have to start this thing. We gotta try it. You know, we gotta try it. We gotta see if uh, the thing runs. So, uh, cross your fingers and wish me luck. Okay, so the car does run, but I'm getting a P0300 um, error code, and that is random misfires. And there's quite a few things that can cause that, um, but I'm going to start with the simplest and most common, and then work my way down to um, the most difficult. Okay. Anytime that you see an error code with 300, 0, 300 something, um, it's talking about a misfire. So if it's um, 0, 301, it's a misfire in cylinder 1. 302, well that's a misfire in cylinder 2. And down the line, I'm getting random misfires. And ah, it could be coil packs. Right, it could be the ignition coils, and I'm going to test those right now. Um, it could be the fuel injectors, right? Um, especially considering the history of um, what had happened with this car. It could be the fuel injectors. Um, it could be intake leaks, like a vacuum leak. Um, but usually you'll get a lean code with that as well, or like a, a MAF sensor. Um, a code saying something's not adding up with the air fuel mixture. Generally, you'll see that. Um, but hey, I'm not going to leave any stone left unturned. And then, of course, you can end up having a blown head gasket, which would end up creating a leak or coolant could be getting inside um, the cylinders. Um, and then the head gasket was replaced. Is there a possibility of that? Sure, but it's unlikely. Um, and the last and the hardest, something's wrong with the timing chain. Something's wrong with the timing. So um, I'm going to start with the easiest and work my way back. We need to ground this in order to see the sparks. I'm going to move this over here so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing. And then I'm going to have to re review the video tape to see if I can spot any of these guys not sparking. But what we want to do is put them in a way that we can actually see if they're sparking or not. Something like that. And then uh, all of these I should be able to see if they're, if they're sparking now. The easiest way would be from the side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip that, each one of these. And the electricity is going to go to the path of least resistance. Now when I turn the engine over I should see spark in all of them. So 
So I had tested all of them and I saw I saw one that was not sparking. And I'm like, huh. Tested the coil with different spark plugs. And interestingly enough, hey, it worked. It was the spark plug that was bad even though it was new. So I'm putting it back together and I'm gonna start it up and see where we're standing. So after moving the coil packs around, um, I finally saw what was going on. And uh, I never even thought to look at this because they were brand new. But this right here, these are new spark plugs, but they don't work. They're not giving any spark. Um, I went ahead and I put my old um, in two locations which would cause the P0300, right? Um, so I put my old ones back in. Um, two of these were good and the other two were bad. And let's see now how this is gonna run. And I even have the air conditioner on right now. So, it looks like a victory, but what a chore, what a chore, man. Um, there's a few things, there's a few things I would like to still do. I cleaned out the inside of it quite a bit um, when it was all taken apart, trying to take the sludge out. But um, I did put liquid molly inside here. And maybe on Friday, I'll go ahead and I'll change the oil. And then I will expect it to look pretty dirty. Um, also, the oil that's in this right now is 020, which is what Nissan recommends. And because of the little bit of wear that's on there, I might end up going up to something like 530, um, which will quiet this down. Right now it's not really too loud or anything like that, and it's not shaking or anything, but I think adding just a little bit of extra thickness to it might might be a good thing. Um, and it's, <clears throat> and that's really an old school trick, you know. Old worn engines use thicker oil to hide some of the malfunction. So because I have lapped the valves, um, because I had lapped the valves, it's almost kind of like there's a new break-in, right? So um, over a period of time, those valves are going to set a little bit better and they're, they're not gonna have that rough edge anymore. Um, and then we'll get better compression, I, I'm certain of that. Um, so there it is. But I am not happy with Nissan and how they engineered this engine, not in the least. But anyway, guys, that's the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's really the only one on the entire internet like it because there is, there is no other video out there about the 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport that goes into such detail on um, tearing it apart and repairing it. There are no service manuals that you can just access off of eBay or whatever. You can get, you can get ones for the Rogue, but not the Rogue Sport. Rogue Sport is a completely different animal.